Oh, hi there. I didn't see you come in. I'm the fabulous Mr. Fox, and this is Roleplay Roulette Satellite video for our review of Iron Claw Squaring the Circle. Okay, if you've been keeping up over the last week, you know that I have currently reviewed the Book of Mysteries and the Book of Jade. So, the only thing that is currently left for me to look at is the Book of Adventures. Now, Iron Claw, the Book of Adventures, is currently the most recent supplement that they put out for the game. Because as I'm currently recording this, I don't believe it's humanly possible for them to get the Book of Bone and Ivory out before I release this. So the Book of Adventures is exactly what it sounds like. It introduces seven adventure modules for the game host to use, and includes a section with a whole bunch of little adventure seeds you can use to do side quests. So as is usual for Sanguine, these are not heavy lead by the nose modules. They're open-ended adventures that allow the game host and the players a lot of freedom in between events. As a longtime fan of the company, I've always been really, really impressed with the way they actually put their adventures together. Now, if you're an older player who was in the first edition, the first thing you're going to notice when you pick this up is that five of the adventures are reprints. They were all originally printed in the supplements for the first edition of the game. Those five being The Lost Heir of the Rinaldi from the Rinaldi book, Martyr of the Catacombs from Dolore, The Rescue of Miranda de Vossier from Felan, A Crisis of Faith from Avor de Poix, and The Wolves in Winter from Bisclavre. This book, however, will introduce to the older player two new adventures, The Wages of Envy and Unearthed Alchemy, the first of which is kind of a swashbuckly Phantom of the Opera adventure in Triskelion, the second of which is more of a supernatural mystery that takes place in, I believe, the Dolore domain. So as a returning player, that actually does feel a little bit like a value down to me, as I actually own all of these adventures already. However, in this edition, they have been changed to conform to the new rules, including having whole gift sets and full write-ups for the new edition. If you've come into this game through the Squaring the Circle edition, all of this is new content. And even if you haven't, this book has all of your favorite adventures compiled in one convenient location with all of the rules updated. Now, unlike the previous books I've reviewed, I can't say that this book is for everybody. I mean, I guess I couldn't say that any of the previous books that I reviewed were for everybody, but if you're into Iron Claw, this this book is really good for you if you are a game host. Even if you're not somebody who generally likes to run modules, the way these are written makes them really easy to integrate and use if for nothing else than hooks and side quests for your main campaign. If you're a player who doesn't intend to run Iron Claw, I would probably actually recommend against owning this. If you aren't planning to run, the best this book has to offer is spoiling potential future adventures for you. However, as a host, I would not be without this. So if that describes you, I recommend it. Okay, so this is going to wrap up our series on Iron Claw. Hopefully, next week we'll be back with the beginning of our Exalted cycle, which is what was actually planned for March. All this was supposed to be in February, <laughs> but we're a month behind. However, if you've been following us, you know that being on time is not exactly our strong suit, which I suppose makes us uniquely qualified to handle Exalted 3rd Edition. Put out a new book. All right, so we'll be back soon, and until then, keep those dice rolling and your sheets crisp. I'm the fabulous Mr. Fox, and this has been Roleplay Roulette.